Welcome to Your Need to Know. I'm Katherine Reed, I'm your host, and joining me today is Susan Bauer. She is the president of the Optimist Club of Greater Vienna. Thank you yes. so much for being here, Susan. Well, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me to come on. So the Optimist Club, you're giving me a little bit of education, is much bigger than I thought. It's, it actually has an international presence. It does. But your club has been here for 63 uh, years? 63 years. We're going into our 64th year and this year. And you're, so after 63 years, you're still going strong, clearly, and yes. expanding. Yes. And you are doing so many things. I'm absolutely blown away by the <laughs> amount of things your club is doing. But give us a little bit of insight is into your Junior Optimist Club, because your reach is not just for adults in your club. You you're actually have hundreds of Junior Optimists in the greater Vienna area? We do. We have um, the greater Vienna area includes the high schools of James Madison, Marshall, and Oakton, and the uh, Flint Hill um, private school. And so, uh, and all the feeder schools, the middle schools and the elementary schools that feed into that. So that's our group of kids that we work with uh, when we're doing, donating things or doing things for the um, um, schools. Mm -hmm. Any time we're doing things for the schools. But the Junior Optimist uh, Clubs are clubs that um, we sponsor as optimists, and we pay a certain amount of money for each child that is in one of these clubs. We have two in the elementary schools. We have all four of the high schools are involved. And these kids do community service projects the same as the adults do, mm -hmm. that we do as optimists. And so um, the children, in the elementary schools and in the high schools are doing community service projects like uh, they'll do um, coat drives, right. they'll do shoe drives, they'll do um, collecting canned goods, mm -hmm. they will do work outside of the school where they will go to a food bank mm -hmm. or they'll go to uh, work in a homeless shelter or whatever the kids decide. The kids decide what they're going to do. So they have a meeting at the beginning of the year and they have a president and a um, secretary treasurer and so forth and the kids decide what it is they want to do and that's what they do for the year and then in May at one of our meetings we have a joy celebration and then the children come um, to our meeting mm -hmm. and they do a slide presentation usually. That's very sophisticated. It actually. is. They bring their, their slide presentation and they talk about what they've done for the year and then each club stands up and they do whatever they've done for the year. And it's interesting because the kids from one school will hear what another school is doing and they'll go, oh, oh yeah, that's a good that's idea. That's a good idea. And this year they're doing a little more collaboration. And the high school girls and guys want to get together and kind of work collaboratively this oh, year. So idea. that's something that they've worked out this year. Um, so there's a gap there in the middle schools. So uh, last year there was a girl who was helping us with the oratorical contest and we talked to her about the middle school gap that we had and sure enough she is now uh, starting a club at the middle school level so that the elementary school kids from Louise Archer going to Thoreau will have a club now in the middle school. So I she's starting so, that and getting it off the ground this I year. I think it's wonderful that it's student-led. I mean, the fact that these, these, these young people have found that they can be leaders, this is a wonderful way for them to it be is. leaders in their community. And you actually had somebody from Flint Hill who attended the international conference. She did. She approached us about starting a joy club because she was friends with somebody at Marshall or Madison, I can't remember which, and had heard about the joy club. So she wanted to start one at Flint Hill. So. She had gotten it all organized, figured out what she had to do, and then she approached us and asked us, you know, to give her the forms and help her get this thing started. So we did. Um, and then, this was her first year, <laughs> then she heard about the international convention, which I couldn't go to last year. I had a family reunion, um, so I couldn't go. But she went and found a teacher to go with her. So wow. she went to the international convention in Canada. And she came back all enthused, and now she is going to start one in the middle school there and one in the elementary. So we'll have three new Joy Clubs this coming year. See, that's amazing. We're hoping. Well, when I say when you're expanding, that's pretty amazing to add three new programs. It is. So you we're talking about hundreds of students. Way, well, when we get these three new clubs, we'll have way over 500 kids involved. 500 kids, all yeah. optimists, in yeah. Joy Clubs. Yes. What could be better than that? 
Well, and that's, that's the whole point. <laughs> and that's the whole point of our Optimist Club is to um, reach out to kids and bring out the best in kids. That's our, our little motto is bringing out the best in kids. So my first encounter with your club was over Ethics Day because mm -hmm. I participate in Ethics Day and have for years at Marshall High School. Right. And the Optimist Club has been a driving force, one of the main sponsors. You get the table moderators in there, mm -hmm. really have been an integral part of those Ethics Days. Yes. We do table monitoring and um, we contribute mm -hmm. money. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to say how much, but we do contribute money to uh, the Ethics Day at Madison and Marshall. Right. So we've been involved in that in a couple of years, a number of years. Yeah. So so after 63 years, clearly you're, you're growing and you're adapting to the needs of these schools and these students, but you've got a long list of things that you're involved in. You know, we've, we've got the Halloween parade coming up. We have the Halloween parade coming up, and we have won two of the prizes for right. the floats. Um, this year we're going, the, the theme is uh, greatest cities in the world. And I thought, well, you know, the greatest city in the world is Vienna. Why of not? Of course, of Even course it is. Even though it's a town, <laughs> it's a city too. Well, it's not. But uh, we decided that we were going to do Vienna as our greatest city. town city. Right. And uh, a symbol of Vienna is the town caboose. And ah, we yes. maintain the town caboose. So we hold it open uh, for open houses so families can go through the caboose and learn a little bit about the uh, Washington and Old Dominion Railroad. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kids can go climb up into the top and look out the windows at the top. But it also needs painting mm -hmm. every once in a while. So this past spring, um, a group of optimists uh, got together and they scraped it all down and then painted the whole outside of the caboose. And we just got the Washington and Old Dominion logo on the side mm -hmm. and so the outside is done and then this spring we'll have to paint the inside but it's the optimists that maintain that caboose and hold it open and we've had over 900 families go through last year wow so on a saturday we have two shifts two optimists in each shift that hold it open and allow kids to go through and see, parents see i did not know so. that i mean i knew about the caboose but i didn't realize that you guys were both maintaining it and providing docents basically yes. for it to, so that it's open yeah. to the public. Yeah. Uh, during the Rotary um, Viva Vienna, Vienna, we hold right. it open all three days. Right. And then uh, strolling on church, we mm -hmm. hold it open then too. So That's fantastic. Yeah. So you're really doing a lot to support things that are, that are very specific to Vienna. You yes. know, the caboose and, and like that. The Halloween parade, and I forget how many years it's been now. I think it's even older than the Optimus Club's been around. I think it's 70-some years. 70-some years. Yeah. And it brings people from all over, not it just does. Vienna. It does, and it's a lot of people that lived in Vienna as kids, and then they move out, but then they come back for the Halloween parade, and it's it's always a lot of fun. It is. We have a great time with it. But in uh, Vienna, I have to say, as a town, does a lot of civic things. I think that's one, one of the reasons that people like living in Vienna, yeah. is that it's got that sort of small town, very cohesive, mm -hmm. close feeling, but it's in the middle of a big, huge county that has a lot of services, too. True. So what are some of the other things that the Optimist Club helps to support in Vienna? Um, well, we do the Halloween parade, and then um, the town of Vienna always asks us to provide people to help them with the Halloween party. Okay. It used to be in the community center, and now they're having it on the green. So wow. we always um, send some volunteers over, plus we donate mm -hmm. uh, to help defray the, some of the cost of the Halloween party, so we do that. Uh, we also help the town with their Chilling on Church, which okay. is their big block party during the summer. They have four of them. And then they ask uh, some of the community organizations to help them with their beer sales, their beer and wine sales. Which is a good fundraiser. Be beer sales generally are good fundraisers. Well, it's good for the town. We just get a, a percentage of the profits, right. net profits. Mm -hmm. And so um, this year it rained. Mm. And so we just about got there and then... It, the heavens opened, and so we all went to the Freeman uh, Center and just sat there on the porch. <laughs> and then finally they decided, okay, we'll try it. So we went back out, and uh, long story short, we made absolutely no money. Zero dollars. We, we, That's we got a, a few tips. <laughs> so it was basically a community service right. volunteer thing that we did for the for the town, but they did give us, I think, $200 of a uh, honorarium for well, showing you know, and up. That's, and that's the thing about a service club like the optimist. And I'm sometimes a Rotarian. Sometimes you make money we, and sometimes you don't. You but know? you know, you have to make money, right? And the, right? All the things you're doing, the donations that you make, the programs, taking care of the caboose, you're doing these fundraisers because that's how you make the money. Yes, Chilling on Church is just 
one of them. Our main fundraiser is the Christmas tree sales that we do. Um, and that's a hoot too because there's people that come back year after year uh, after but year. But that's great. It is great. And uh, we do get help uh, from the, the Joy Club kids come in and then some of the football teams or the baseball teams come in and help us out. Um, and some of the kids come back and I remember when I helped out when I was in Joy Club or when I was on the baseball team, I remember when I came out and helped out. So, you know, we get some of that coming back. With so when does Christmas that start? Trees. How long, how many, how we, many weeks do you sell? We start the weekend after Thanksgiving. Okay. So we are in the process now and have been in the last couple of weeks getting together with our tree supplier and, you know, figuring out how many trees we need to get and so forth and then working with the people that own the parking lot there at the giant parking lot. Um, so there's all that backstory stuff that you have to get it is. started. That's, like that's a pretty massive a couple of sort weeks of undertaking. Yeah. yeah, and then we have to order the trees, and then it's just all this tree stuff. And then we open the weekend after Thanksgiving, and we keep going until we until we sell out. Oh wow! And then you have the takedown. Right. So you have the set up and the takedown. Do you we have usually a trailer sell there. out? Do you usually sell out the trees before Christmas? We usually sell out pretty much. Um, a lot of times we will, whatever trees are left on the lot, we just leave a little donation box up there and then just people That's just great take idea. what they need and That's a great put a idea. donation in. But we don't have that many trees left. So a lot of times there might be little ones right. that are left, you know. And then we donate trees to the Women's Center. Right. And we donate a tree to the Colmer Center, um, which is uh, part of Second Story, and that's down mm -hmm. at Bailey's Crossroads. So we donate some trees also. The other fundraiser that we uh, have is that a lot of people don't know this either, but there's a Vienna Farmer's Market, and that is run by our Optimus Club. So now we're calling it Vienna, or the Optimus Vienna Farmer's Market because nobody knows that we're running that. They no think kidding. the town of Vienna is running it, but they're not. So, and so how, what are the dates for? That starts in May, mm -hmm. and that goes through until October. The end okay. of October. So you're kind of wrapping that up right now and yes. getting ready for your Christmas trees, right? Yeah. Well, One here's thing finishes and the next thing starts. I know. Well, let's hope the fact that Amazon is now delivering Christmas trees it will not impact your sales. When we come back from our <laughs> break, we are going to be talking with Susan Bauer about the many ways in which the Optimist Club is supporting a lot of organizations in and around Greater Vienna and ways that people can get involved in helping to support the Optimist Club. Gotcha. <laughs> I surrender, I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. We have a gun. What's up? We have a gun. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. So I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay. I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Welcome back to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and joining me today is Susan Bauer. She is the president of the Greater of the Optimus Club of Greater Vienna. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Well, you've wowed me so far with the amazing things that your club is doing, but there's more. So you've got lots of recognition 
uh, awards that you do throughout the year, and I think one of them is for first responders. Yes. We, um, we just started that this year. One of our uh, members uh, suggested that, and we looked into it, and we said, yeah, you know, we should be doing something for first responders. We do um, partners in education where we give awards for teachers, mm -hmm. and then we have respect for law, and we have uh, Vienna police that we recognize, and then one from Fairfax County. Uh, so we're doing that one, and so those are the three that we do, respect for law, partners in education, and first responders. And that helps the, that's recognized in the community people. Right. But then we also do a lot of recognition rewards for kids. Mm -hmm. Again, kids are our main focus. Well, um, you, mentioned the or the community. you mentioned the oratory contest, which is for middle schoolers, correct? Um, we are going to open that up to uh, high school kids oh, this nice, year because nice. um, when we go, when we hold a contest here in, in, in our group with the optimists here, the winners of those contests then go to the district and then they compete with other kids in Virginia. And then from there, they go to the zone. Right. And then from the zone, they go right. so up and up and up and up until they go to um, the national level. And there, they can get even bigger scholarships. So there's scholarships that they get along the way. That's and fantastic. the oratorical contest, they can get up to like $20,000 in scholarships. So the oratorical contest is a, a really big scholarship that they can get at the national and international level. So you were talking too um, at the break the fact that you have a special contest for the deaf and hard of hearing, which I was not we aware do. of. We do. We have a contest. Um, a lot of these contests are Optimist International contests, mm -hmm. and then each uh, Optimist Club holds contests. Um, so the communication contest for the deaf and hard of hearing um, is phenomenal because these kids get up there and they. One of our winners one time did his entire speech in sign language. Wow. And it was truly amazing because doing his in sign language, you could see the emphasis on the words that he was wanted to emphasize through his sign language. Now, we had one of his teachers was uh, saying it out loud right. from his sign language, but it was just absolutely phenomenal. So this past year, we had four students, two boys and two girls, and they were at the middle school level. They went to um, the district, and I went down for that, and they had improved from the time they did it for us until the time they went down to the district. I mean, the improvement was just phenomenal. And they, um, they had a winner from that, and it was not the winner that we had chosen. When, we, when they went down, a different kid won, and he was so shocked that he had won. He just assumed that the kid that had won at our level was going to win at the district level, and, he, and that child didn't win the other child won and he was just like couldn't believe that he had won and then they there were the high school kids that also competed so there was a um, the younger ones and then the older ones that competed that is amazing what a so, great opportunity it's just the confidence that this gives these kids I mean that's what's so wonderful about some of these recognition contests that we do we do the oratorical contest we have the communication for the deaf and hard of hearing and then we have an essay contest and the kids are, ch are chosen um, the winners have already picked when they come to our meeting, and then the winners read their essays. And then from there, the, there's three of them, and we pick the first, second, and third. So those, are those done in conjunction with your regularly scheduled meetings? Because you do have two events a month, right? We have uh, the first and third Wednesdays that we meet. Um, some of them are dinner meetings. Some of them are um, socials. Right. Um, we have all our meetings set up ahead of time as to when we're going to do the oratorical contest and the communication for the deaf and hard of hearing contest and the essay contest. And then our partners for education and our respect for law and our first responders and then our joy celebration. So we have a number of meetings that are set up for when we're going to be doing recognition events. But we also have one that we do at uh, Madison High School and that's for all the high school students and we give out um, scholarship awards for citizenship or te wow. technology or arts or whatever. I mean, we give a lot of awards out for um, these scholarships. And that's for the junior years so that these kids have something to put on their resumes when they're trying to get into college. Now, see, that is very interesting. I've never heard of that before. Most, yeah. most scholarships are given in the senior year, right, because it's really kind of focused on the monetary part. But I love this idea that you're giving it to them in their junior year. So it's part of their college application. It that is, is brilliant. It is. 
it's um, it just really helps the kids just get an appreciation award, really. Right. So uh, we have recognition awards, and then we have youth awards and appreciation awards and vocational scholarships. So we also give a vocational scholarships for those kids that are not going to go to college. They uh, you know, I think that's important to too. work in auto repair or plumbing or whatever they're going and yeah, to and there do. Are a lot of, and there are a lot of students who are choosing to go into certification programs at the local community college. Exactly. And we have a wonderful community college system in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Northern Virginia Community College offers so many opportunities it for does. people who don't want a four-year degree. I think vocational scholarships are terrific. Yeah. George Mason has a, a program that is for kids with special needs, mm -hmm. and it's called the Life Program. And yeah, Mason did Light. not have any money set aside for that. And then one of our past presidents gave us a tremendous gift, and we have taken part of that gift. And now we've set up a scholarship so that we can now give money to these to a child who wants to go to this Life Program. So that will be a special needs student. That is amazing. So I'm we are very in the process yeah. of setting that up. I'm very familiar with Mason Life. We've had Mason Life on this show have before. Good, we have. Good. Um, we have, Dr. Heidi Graff. And so, and it's right here. They take 73 mm -hmm. students, I think, a year into that program. Mm -hmm. And that does such amazing things because it's life skills, it's mm -hmm. all kinds of skills. And those students go on to get jobs and internships and it's wonderful. Well, that's what we're hoping. Um, Cheryl A. Friedley is uh, the name of the uh, optimist who was president a number of years ago, and she worked at George Mason. Ah. And she has moved out to uh, the Midwest to take care of her, her parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, she gave us this huge donation, and that's what we decided to do with it I because we did brilliant. not have anything for special needs. So you know, I, that is that's fantastic. what we did with it, well, with part of it anyway. Yeah, and we've got in Fairfax County, we have the SEPTA now, which is the Special Education PTA. Yes. We've also had them on this program as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, the educational system is trying to do more for students that have disabilities, intellectual disabilities or mm -hmm. developmental delays. And so having a scholarship that actually gives them an opportunity to attend a program that's so well regarded right here in the area. Yeah. You know, yeah, go really Shirley helps. for having t decided to do that. She is phenomenal. She also has a program that she set up called Helping Hands, and it's kind of a citizenship award, and it's given to the sixth graders of every elementary school that feeds into Marshall, Madison, and Oakton. So all of those elementary schools, we take them all over to Westwood Country Club wow. with their parents and with their sixth grade teacher. You know, so we feed them all That's <laughs> at Westwood fantastic. Country Club. And then each one of them gets an award for their school, and they get a little write-up in the program. We talk about what they've done to get the award. And Cheryl came back yeah. for um, last year's, and I think it was the 22nd year that we've been doing this, mm -hmm. and she's the one that started it when she was president. And uh, they each get, I think, $200 for their school. That's and then amazing. they can help the, with the to school decide, to decide to do, how they're going to spend it. their money. So we may increase that with this gift that uh, Cheryl gave us. So we've named that the Cheryl A. Friedley Helping Hands Award. You know, and I think... So she was I, excited. I guess I'm impressed with how you keep adding programs. You're like, you're doing a lot, but you figured out ways to add even more, which means that you must be doing a pretty good job at fundraising, too. Besides your Christmas trees, <laughs> besides your Christmas tree, you must be doing a lot because this is an, an enormous number of programs and awards and recognitions to fund. Plus, you're paying for each one of these students to the international optimist. For the junior optimist, yeah. yes. We do pay yeah, we a do. amount. So I'm, I'm in awe well, of the prowess just, of your club. We, we have a good um, board of directors that uh, look at the budget yeah. and try to figure out, okay, which things are we going to fund and which things can we not fund. You know, you have to make decisions um, based on what you have. So if people are interested in becoming a member, so let's say our viewers are like, this sounds like the club for me. What, what is the process of, can people attend your meetings? Do you have to live in Vienna? I mean, kind of what is... No, not everybody lives in Vienna that comes um, and has joined our uh, club. There are people outside of Vienna that come and have just, you know, are friends with other friends. It's usually word of mouth. It's usually invitations that we know someone and we invite them. But we have gotten people from Meetup. Oh, uh, right. You do have a meetup site. We have you a meetup site. Do. We have Facebook. We've mm -hmm. had people come to our socials that have just heard about it from Facebook. Uh, we have, um, of course, our... Uh, oh. 
Internet. You're right, 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 right. <laughs> Sorry, right. I'm trying to, you know, we have our social media sites. So um, for more information, there's www.optimistclubofgreaterviana.org uh, or info at optimistclubofgreaterviana.org. We have, uh, you can like our Facebook page, that's Vienna Optimist Club. And we can also be found on meetup.com slash Vienna dash optimist dot uh, dash club. Or you can contact me. That's right. <laughs> and I'm Susan Bauer, optimist at gmail.com. Right. So if people were interested, for instance, if people were just interested in hearing the oratory contest, they can go to your website because you've got a calendar that's already we said did. when yes. all of these things are going to mm -hmm. be. Or if people are interested in hearing or hearing the or the contest for your deaf and hard of hearing, right? Mm -hmm. These are things that people could come and yes. kind of get a feel for both yeah. the club and yeah. these particular events that you're yeah. doing. The other thing that we've uh, now I don't know if an Optimist International is going to do it for this year, but they've had a um, teachers can um, join the club for thirty dollars oh, for nice. the entire year. That's so a they've nice been way. doing it the last two years. I don't know if they're going to be doing it this year, but it would be nice if they did that because teachers are naturally involved with kids. You yeah. know? And um, I mean, I was a former Fairfax County teacher, retired now. And, you know, for me, this is like a no-brainer. Right. It's a know? natural fit for I'm still what, yeah, right? involved with kids. So it's, it's, you know, my passion. So I uh, found that the Optimist Club was a good fit for me. So. It's probably a good fit for a lot of other people who just don't know it's out there. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. It's not a networking club. Like I know. A lot it's a of service other club. business yep. clubs are. Um, I'm not going to say which clubs you know are networking right. clubs, but they, we have had some members come in who thought it was something kind else. Of thought it was a networking club yeah. and found out it wasn't, and then kind of. Right. realized it was some work involved yeah. and they kind of dropped out yeah. but uh, you have to it find really it. is it really is for people who really want to give back to the community and help kids and help themselves I well mean, I think that better is, people that is the greatest testimonial you could possibly have for the Optimist Club of Greater Vienna so thank you so much Susan for having come thank on the you show. for inviting me to come on and speak about this this club because I love it and it just does so much and I think um, anyone that would want to get back to their community come see us we'd love to have you terrific thank you